Thanks for visiting. If you like what you see, click that subscribe button so we can keep you informed and up to date with all the latest videos and blogs. Hi, my name is Steve House from Siemens Process Instrumentation. I'm a product manager who looks after integration and in today's blog I'm going to be showing you how to build a Profinet project on a PDM standalone license. So the first thing we have to do, we don't have the project on this PC so we're going to use a tool called Primary Setup Tool to detect the network IP addresses. So once we have Primary Setup Tool open we don't have to worry about our current uh, IP settings on our PC such as the domain as this will just scan the network and find the Siemens devices and give us an indication of what we need to set our PC IP address to. So once we've got it open we click on that network, browse and this will now detect all of the devices connected to this network and the devices that we're interested in that have instrument instrumentation connected is the compact field unit and the ET200SP. It doesn't find any modules underneath that, it's just finding the MAC address and the IP address of the instrument. So once I have scanned my network and I have my IP addresses, I open up PDM and as you can see here, I've started a new project and labeled that up as Profinet Demo. So the first thing we need to do is right click here and insert a new communication network. We have a few to choose from, but in this instance, we're on a Profinet network We've selected that to connect to a Profinet network with PDM no additional routing or license tags are required so I can see here that I have my Profinet network I can set my interface independently of the PC PG interface so it will work completely independent of any other software so the next thing I need to do is to add a new device and we will start with the compact field unit so right click insert new object and we'll put in the IP address that we've already discovered by you by using the primary setup tool so in this case 192.168.0.4 and if we click on assign device type and then select device identification PDM will tell us what the connected device is. So in this case, compact field unit, firmware revision 1.0. So we know we have a connection because PDM has already discovered the device. So it's actually started some communication. But what we need to do now is see physically what is connected to that compact field unit. So over here on the right hand side, it's PDM and we can start life list. So on the compact field unit, we can have up to eight Profibus PA devices. The compact field unit automatically addresses them in this range, 20 to 27, but we just need to see what they are. So if we click on the scan button, it's found address 20 and 21. Now the generic GSDs are being used because that's the way this device works. But what it's going to do is read the six digit or eight digit code from the device so I get an idea of what it actually is. So I can see here that I have a CLS 300 on address 21 and an LR 250 on address 20. So I'll show you how to insert address 20. So insert new object, similar to how we um, inserted the Profinet device, but because we're a level down, PDM already knows that this is a Profibus PA device. So if we click on assign device type, we can manually look for the device ourselves. If you click on device identification, again, 
as long as the EDD is installed in the library, it will find the device and then we can see it's installed. So what I can do now is right click on the very top, PDM, I want to load the device parameters to this project. So we're going to load to the PC. We'll select the subnets, so not just the compact field unit. And this will read all of the devices. In this case, it's just one. If we had eight devices, it would read the parameters from eight devices. Um, if you ever used PDM before on Profibus PA, um, please note the speed that this is this is uploading. It's vastly faster than a standard Profibus DP to PA connection. So it can help with your commissioning times. So we've now added the compact field unit. So the second part of the IO structure is the ET200SP. This is a little bit trickier because the scanning of the analog card cannot be done by a life list. So you're going to have to have a little bit of knowledge about the project. So if we click Profinet Network, insert new object, and the IP address here of the ET200SP is 192.168.0.0.0. And 10. And again, we can click on a assigned device type and get PDM to tell us what is connected. So that's the simple bit. Underneath here, we're going to have various IO cards in different slots. So on this particular project in slot one or slot zero, I have a um, uh, weighing card and then in my next slot I have a uh, heart input card so under the uh, SP if I click insert new object you will see here slot number so that's the very first slot number I'm not too sure if that differs from how the PLC refers to it as slot 0 but PDM the first slot is always slot 1 so we know it's the second slot it's going to be heart and then it's a heart input module so at this stage we have four channels now you may not have a heart instrument on all of these channels but um, PDM will still bring back the diagnostics if it's a wire break or whatever but we actually have a device connected to channel 0 so we'll insert a new object there And the heart address is always zero. I can't edit that. So if somebody's changed your heart address on the instrument, they've actually put it into multi-drop mode and it won't communicate to the Siemens heart input cards. So we need to be set to zero. So I'll click on assign device type. And now, because we're talking directly to the instrument, because we've routed down, we can select device identification. And this should find a TH300 temperature sensor that's a head mounted temperature transmitter and we can we can do the same again with this so if we right click up the top pdm load to pg collect select all the sub networks and it will read the parameters so here unfortunately we are governed by the speed of heart so it's still a lot quicker um, than doing Profibus DP to heart, but uh, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about the upload speeds of heart. So, I now have a working project on uh, PDM, so this allows me to, to select networks in one big chunk, and then I can update diagnostics for everything connected to that Profinet network. So rather than going to each individual instrument, I can start to scan complete networks, IO, or individual instruments. And you can see in this case, I'm just selecting the whole network. So I want to see what the current status is of all the instruments on that network.
to look at the instrument parameters in, in more detail or to start doing um, things like uh, echo profiles or testing of instruments we can open up PDM in a more detailed view so in this case we want to open all these devices up because we, we want to jump around and have a look at quite a few instruments at the same time so we right click here and open object once it's opened I see a list of my instrument parameters so in this case I've got the compact field unit highlighted that's the compact field unit parameters and up here we have quick start wizards for the compact field unit as soon as I select the 250 so this is a radar device it will load the LR250 parameters and then we'll bring up all of the LR250 menu structures so have a quick look at things like quick start wizards for configuring the device or echo profiles what I wanted to show you is some of the diagnostics you get from standard heart or milliamp devices so here we have the ET200SP slot 1 go to diagnostics I can update the diagnostics I can check the configuration I'm going to come down to the heart card and we'll have a look at the diagnostics for that so I can see the heart is active on channel 0 and I have no wire breaks or measurement over range or short circuits on that channel so that channel's healthy and then if I wanted to go a little bit further down onto channel 0 I can see the temperature puck and all of the parameters associated with that temperature puck and I can also see the process values as they start updating on this screen so it's very powerful once you have your network set up to, to, to jump from one instrument to another and see all of these settings this concludes the blog for showing you how to set up a Profinet network I hope it was useful and uh, please tune in again for more useful blogs. Thank you very much.